right, so we're gonna do some probability. So probability is the likelihood that an event will happen. So there's three types of probability. Empirical probability, theoretical, and subjective. Empirical probability comes after the event has occurred. So if you flip a coin 30 times and it comes up every heads, the empirical probability of the event is 100% heads. Theoretical probability is you predicting it before the event happens. So the probability of getting a heads when you flip a coin is 1 over 2, 50%. And subjective probability is the probability based on an estimate, your best guess. So if I was to say, what's the probability of you passing this course? And you say 100%, that's your subjective probability. So overall, we're going to use theoretical probability the most. So the formula for theoretical probability is the number of desired outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. So what that means is, if we're looking for the probability of rolling a 1 when we roll a die, the total number of outcomes when you roll a die is 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. And the number of desired outcomes, in this case what we're looking for, is a 1. So the probability is 1 over 6. Now, something called the sample space is the list of every possible outcome in the probability experiment. So if we roll a die, the sample space is the numbers 1 to 6. If you're picking from a thing of 10 blue socks, 5 red socks, and 6 green socks, the sample space is going to be red, blue, or green, because those are the only outcomes that are possible. So we're going to do an example. Let's say we're rolling two dice, and I want to find out what's the probability of getting a number less than 5. So what we do to start is we draw out the sample space of rolling two dice. So this is the list of every possible outcome. So when we're doing probability, remember, it's the number of desired outcomes over the number, the total number of outcomes. So we're looking for the probability of a number less than 5. So less than 5. So the total number of outcomes in this case is 36. And I got that by just counting all the numbers here. Now the number of desired outcomes, less than 5, we'll circle in. We have 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, and 4. So we count them up. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there's 6 desired outcomes, which means the probability is 6 over 36, or if we reduce it, 1 over 6. So we can also use probability using all the organized counting techniques we learned in the previous unit. So as an example, let's say, What's the probability of five people in a photograph standing in order of descending height? So, we do the same thing we did before. Probability is always the number of desired outcomes over the total number of outcomes. So if five people are standing in a row, the total number of ways they can stand is going to be five factorial. Now, how many different possibilities are there for people standing in order of descending height? That can only happen one way. So the probability of that happening is 1 over 5 factorial. And you can do this with anything. What's the probability of the two shortest people standing together? We do the same thing we did in the previous unit. We turn these into one group. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces. So that's 4 factorial ways they can stand together. And 2 within. So it's 4 factorial, 2 factorial over 5 factorial. So the premise is always the same. Desired on top and the total on the bottom. We can also do it with those card questions we did earlier as well. What's the probability of choosing a six card hand that has exactly two face cards? Well, the desired is having exactly two face cards, so we have 12 choose two, picking the two face cards, and then choosing the remaining four from the rest of the cards on top, that's our desired, and we put it all over the total, which is choosing six cards from 52 with no restrictions. So if you remember back to the indirect method, probability has something similar. So the probability of A, so we'll consider A something happening, plus the probability of A prime. So this prime means the opposite. So A not happening equals 1. So it sounds confusing, but basically what it means is the probability of something happening plus the probability of something not happening equals 1. It equals the total. So as an example, say we're rolling a die. The probability of getting a 1 is 1 over 6. The probability of not getting a 1 is every other number other than 1, 5 over 6. If we add them up, it equals 6 over 6. 
So you can use this kind of like the indirect method. 1 minus the probability of something not happening is equal to the probability of something happening. So if you have the probability of the opposite, you do 1 minus and it gives you what you're looking for. Okay, so we're just going to do a couple of quick examples. So if you remember back to the sample space we drew earlier with two dice, the probability of rolling a 7 is 6 over 36. So what's the probability of not rolling a 7? 1 minus 6 over 36. So we can turn 1 into a fraction with common denominators, 36 over 36, and just using basic math, we reduce it down. The answer is 5 over 6. I'll give you one more example. If the probability of passing a test is 72% or 0.72, then the probability of not passing or failing the test is 1 minus 0.72, which equals 0.28.